Friday, right? <laughs> I know, not a particularly interesting Friday. It is April 15th. If you're in the United States, that is a date that brings fear into our hearts. They call that tax day here. This is the day by which we are normally supposed to file our income taxes or pay our income taxes and whatever. So delayed for a couple of days for pick your favorite reason. I don't know. I don't care. But that's the nice thing about my life. I, have, I love my life. Uh, I love my wife. And you put the two together and my wife is a uh, an accountant and, and all these other things and handles taxes. Every year she puts a piece of paper in front of me and says, sign these spaces and walk away. Now for, I don't know what I'm signing. <laughs> I may have just signed over everything to her long before I pass. But I get up in the morning. I have a lovely hot cup of tea. I start working. So whatever I've signed, it doesn't seem to have impacted my life very much. Well, it is Friday. It's April 15th. It's Pi Day Friday. This is drama once again. And I'm so pleased to be with you. It has been... Uh, an unbelievably busy couple of weeks. Mike has kind of mentioned to you last week and again uh, a little bit this week, there are big, big, big doings at Total Seminars. And by and large, those big during doings, while we're aware of what they are, they mostly as yet don't have any daily impact on us worker bees. We get up in the morning and we still do the, the same things we've always done and we probably will. Uh, for quite some time, but every now and again, somebody gets pulled aside and, hey, we're going to need you to do this, and there's always new projects up and coming, and, and I got a couple of those this week, uh, and it's just been, a, for me, a, a very exciting week. I'm uh, looking forward to some of the things that are up and coming. I know I have some uh, responsibilities that are going to get uh, assigned to me when those things occur, and I'm excited about them. I, I'm just looking forward to no end. Uh, and life in general has been fun and busy elsewhere. I had a huge gig last weekend that I'm going to tell you a little bit about because of some of the insanely cool equipment uh, that we had to put together. Uh, today is not only tax day in the United States. It is also a holiday all over the world for many folks. And for that reason, I was kind of expecting a, a thinner turn down, uh, turn up, whatever. <laughs> People who don't show up and watch their show than usual. So I've decided to hold off on a project for today. Uh, and I'm also going to do a much shorter show. My plan is to do about an hour. We'll go longer if necessary. We'll go shorter if necessary. But uh, since it's Q&A and since I'm not going to do a project, uh, it kind of naturally evolves into a shorter show. Now, if some, something odd pops up and we get uh, 75 people come in and they're all asking questions, I'll go the whole two hours without a project. I love just to talk with you folks and uh, see what's going on. So let's just start that out right now. Let's see who's arrived and if anything has already started <laughs> in the chat channel. So I'm doing some experiments as ever and always. I've got uh, one of the video feeds turned off. So I think that frees up my bandwidth and hopefully makes me just a little bit clearer as I don't shrink that. Up. I, the black backdrop, part of the gig this weekend, I've been putting things away and we had to pick up that backdrop for something specific and it doesn't go with the rest of my pipe and drape supplies and I didn't know what to do with it. So I'm, okay, I'll just hang on the set for today and we'll figure it out. It won't be there next week. I mean, it won't be there by the end of this weekend. Okay, so uh, I'm checking out the uh, chat feed. And if you're doing the same thing, you might want to toggle the timestamps. That'll help later with our contest. And you might also want to change it from top chat to live chat. And that will prevent YouTube from filtering out things that it thinks ought to be filtered. I'm working solo today. Again, it is a holiday. It's a company holiday for us. And Andrew has uh, some family things that he wanted to do. And I said, hey, fine, I'll do the show solo. So, uh, <laughs> I would ask for help, but I, I can't, it, it doesn't work that way. But you know, call me if uh, you see Russian hackers 
coming in and I'll, and I'll get down to the bottom, but I can't go down to the bottom and come back up and read the message. I'm just kind of working my way top to bottom. That's how it goes. So Des 543, Des, right? I, I saw you post that earlier. I was doing some setup here and I said, Des, is that Mike? You know, Meg, Mike's uh, moniker is Des Wes, and you just don't run across a lot of Des things. So uh, maybe you're his secret child that nobody's ever known. And anyway, so you did punch in at 124 and asked if it was too early. Yeah, the show didn't start for another 35 minutes, but there are people who do turn up early like that and they start conversing. So by all means, if uh, if I've got the, the thing set up to go live at some time in the future, if I have it pre-set up, the, uh, the chat channels work. And I think what they do, I haven't put an actual clock on this thing, but if you post a message in there and there isn't a live stream going on, it lasts a certain amount of time. I don't know, two hours, 24 hours, whatever. But you could theoretically use it as a, a temporary chat channel and the same goes for any other things that are scheduled, pre-scheduled like this. Tullowitz here. Good morning, all. And Siegfried is open topics. Yeah, okay. So it's open topics today because I'm not doing a project. Uh, and that means uh, I don't have anything new that's going to go on the Pi R Square server. However, I do have that server up and running in case you uh, feel the need to go back and get any of my old archive documents from the last year and a half, year and three quarters. We are, I believe, four months away from my second anniversary on the show. And so if there's any documents that you want that I've ever done, outlines and stuff like that from previous shows, just go to pi r square, P-I-R-S-Q-U-A-R-E dot zapto, Z-A-P-T-O dot org. Let me see if I have that up here somewhere that I could post. Nah, nah I'll just type it down. Dave's document archive server, HTTP colon whack whack. It's not secure, it's just HTTP these days. Uh, pi R square, P I R S Q U A R E dot zapto dot org. And there you go, it's in the chat channel and you can hit that link. I will leave it up and running all weekend. And if you're watching this on archive, and it's not the weekend and it's not up and running, you send me a note, uh, Dave R at totalsem.com or D Rush TX. I'm Dave Rush in Texas at yahoo.com and say, Dave, I want to get to your archive document server. And uh, just tell me when and where, and, and I will turn it on for a couple hours before and after your request. Uh, I get these kind of requests from Russian hackers all the time. Hey, I, Dave, I want to hack your thing at two o'clock, at two o'clock UDT on Tuesday. And so at one o'clock UDT on Tuesday, I open it up for hacking for an hour. <laughs> Someday that's probably going to happen. Uh, there was something, as I was saying that, that I wanted to bring up. Oh yeah. Yeah. Let me, let's get this junk out of the way. So this is drama. Dave Rush asked me anything. It's a live ask me anything presentation. The easiest way to do that is to uh, communicate in the YouTube chat channel, but if that's not available to you because you're watching offline or whatever your rationale is and you don't or can't, come here you, there's the screen share, uh, have the ability to communicate with us live in the chat channel, you can always contact me via email. I am Dave R at totalsem.com. Andrew's not here, but he's Andrew H at totalsem.com. Mike Myers isn't here, but if you ever want to talk to Mike Myers, loves to get your emails. He's a little distracted this week. You send him something right now, don't expect a quick response, but it'll happen. Uh, he is Michael M, M-I-C-H-A-E-L-M at totalsem.com. You can also contact me at my personal email address, drushtx at yahoo. And if there's other, there's other ways on this page to contact us if you need them, just pause your show sometime. And, uh, Capture this screen. What else is going on on this document? I'm finally learning not to quit out of it. So there's my Pi server these days, pirsquare.zapto.org. I will somehow, someday, some way get that returned to HTTPS, but I really don't care. It's just an exercise because they're 
you're not sending me any information that needs to be encrypted. I'm not asking for login names or passwords or social security numbers or your bank account or that. And I'm not sending you anything like that. So the fact that it's open uh, doesn't hurt anything. AMA weekly specials. Hey, we got specials just for you because you are kind enough to join myself and Mike on his Monday and Wednesday shows at the same time on the same channel. Uh, we still have our e-bundles that you put together by going to totalsem.com. There's a topic that you're interested in studying. Uh, let's say you want to study CYSA+. What you do is you go to our merchant area and you get two items. You get the CYSA+, ebook and the CYSA plus total tester. Put those in your basket. And when you check out this week, it's going to end on Sunday night this week, use the code Tyler, as in the guy who became the president of the U.S. after uh, his president, he was vice president, and his president uh, died in office. Mysteriously? Perhaps not. Let's go through this Sunday night. Then Monday morning, I'll start up uh, I haven't heard anything about a new program yet, so same program, probably same code. And last but not least, for the things up on this document, the Discord channel. There is an unofficial Total Seminars Discord channel. Why is it unofficial? Because Total Seminars has nothing to do with it. We don't own it. We don't operate it. We didn't set it up. It was done by uh, some of the people who are actually here in the live chat channel this very day. Uh, Siegfried, I'm looking at you, buddy. Siegfried is the one who uh, has launched the current uh, unofficial Total Seminars Discord channel, UTSD. And if you would like to join us, and, and we would certainly like you to join, uh, please do. Here's a permanent invitation. It's case sensitive. And let me throw that in the YouTube chat channel because I have that one here and ready to go. Ports and protocols, voucher contest. There it is. Pi R Square archive server. Oh, I did have that. Oh well. Into the channel you go. All right. So just posted at whatever time it is right now, about 12 minutes past the hour. Uh, you can click on that right now. Go join up and uh, see hundreds of people there. I think we're banging on the close to, as I saw yesterday or so, 350 participants and it's a really awesome resource. If you're studying for CompTIA, we got places on there they got. I say we, because I, I hang there a lot. Uh, but there is forums and sub forums for people who are studying. There's sub forums for people who are interested in all kinds of different topics. There's Kali Linux, there's Raspberry Pis, there's Ray Linux, there's help me fix my computer. Uh, so if you have questions on those things, that's a great place to go. If you have answers, for some of those topics and the many, 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 many other topics. There's a World of Warcraft forum on there because a lot of the participants uh, started up a WoW League uh, some months back. You get the idea, lots and lots of good stuff here. Oh, and I guess, yeah, why not? As long as I'm at it here and I've got the page up, here is the uh, information about the discount program for this week, Control V, so that you can remember. Oh, you know, I said Tyler. Tyler is next week. See, I'm glad I fixed that. Uh, that's uh, uh, the code this week is Titanic. Titanic. This Monday, this past Monday, the Titanic launched uh, from London to New York. Four days later, it hit a berg. The morning after that, it hit the bottom. <laughs> you know how that goes. Sorry about that. If you had friends or relatives on board, so man, I can't believe I had that Tyler one in here. Sorry about that. Yeah, week of 4-11, yes. Well, I totally blew that. Eh, I know what happened. Wait, it just says Titanic. Okay, it was the slide. I see what happened. Okay. And let me get one more thing kind of pre-marked up here for later. There we go. That's a good thing. That'll make me doing contest all by my lonesome much easier. Okay, enough of that nonsense. Let's get back to who's here and what they're talking about. Can I shrink this down and get it out of my way? Yes, I can. All right, where were we here? So I posted that, and Brian Cannon is here. Greetings, Brian Cannon. Nice to see you back. Always these dramas. <laughs> it is morning in paradise. 
Hello, wait, I, I have enough Hawaiian shirts to do the gig. But I ran across a, an ad where a guy was dumping off 20 Hawaiian shirts for 50 bucks. And I said, I got, you know, $2.50 for a good Hawaiian shirt. And it was all good brand names. So now I have, I have, I got to go pick it up yet. But <laughs> I have added 20 more Hawaiian shirts to my litany for the show. So <laughs> 35. I'm ready to go seven weeks or so, six weeks uh, with a new shirt every week. I'm excited. Dalton Lundgren is here. Wow. I've got Lundgrens living just down the street from me and uh, very, very good friend. Uh, they, they have a, uh, uh, they're a swim family. Let's call it that way. Uh, we're a swim family. My kid grew up uh, as a competitive swimmer. Likewise, their kid, nice and close. So. Uh, if you have friends or relatives in Houston by a similar last name, why am I so bright on this side? What's going on? It's dark out there. That help? No, now I'm just really bright. All right, I'm really bright. So I'll go today. Anyway, let's back to go to Dalton here. Uh, thank you for doing this. I've been IT for 10 in IT for 10 years. And heavy networking for about three. I'm worried about Network Plus's difficulty. How do you rank it in terms of difficulty? Love you guys. Well, we love you right back, of course. Um, that's a horrible question. And the answer that I give gets me in trouble every single time. So here we go again. I'm going to get myself in trouble. People always ask, how hard is this exam? How hard is that exam? Is the A-plus exam tough? I uh, now, I'm going to sound flippant here, and I don't intend to be it. I'm not coming down on you or anybody else. I don't know you. Uh, the answer is they are all the same level of difficulty. It's a question of what you bring to the table before you take the exam and your study habits and, of course, your, the material that you study from. Here's my short answer that gets me always in trouble. Well, if you know everything, it's easy. Man, I can't tell you how many times will I get smacked for saying something like that. There we go. If I get a little closer here like this, I'm not so burnt out bright. Um, I don't think it's hard. That's not fair. I love networking. I have been networking for mm, 30 years, give or take. Uh, I haven't taken the new N10008. I had a little bit to do with the writing of it as far as some of the research goes. I fully plan on taking it in the next 30 days. I'm not going to study. Uh, and if I don't pass, there the only thing I've studied is I've looked at the objective and said, hmm, that's new from compared to the old one. And maybe I do a, a couple of minutes of research on that. But look, if you use appropriate study materials and you bring three years of networking to the table, I think for you, it's going to be easy as well. Dave, what do you mean by appropriate study materials? Glad you asked that question. So if you have no background in any topic, in, in A+, plus, you have, you've never opened up a computer, then there is a certain set of study materials that are appropriate for you. On the other hand, if you've been building computers for several years and you have been fixing computers in a formal or informal fashion regularly, right? Not every month I have some kind of thing that I got to fix. That's not fixing computers, but a year's worth of hands-on fixing computers from telephone support with your friends or family or with whatever, or as an intern or whatever. Um, that's the recommended prerequisite for just about all CompTIA exams, one year experience in the field. Now that recommendation says, given that, if you absorb everything, it's CompTIA's theory that you could, should, would be able to go and pass the exam. That's probably, for most people, that's not the case because the exam is so much more wide ranging than a fixed support job in computer fixology or network setupology and fixology. There's that weird stuff that uh, you never do in your very straightforward list of responsibilities. Hence, classes like video courses. Video courses like ours, uh, I think, oh gosh, I don't remember how long, how many hours. Uh, our network plus is, our, our, but let's say give or take 30 hours. Okay, so if you've got three years of experience and you watch the 20, 30 hours of our videos and you say, you know what, that all makes sense to me, 
take a practice test just to make sure that there's no surprise topics in there. L better yet, look over the objectives. Okay, once you know what the objectives are, and if you run across something that this didn't get covered in the video course that I took, that happens sometimes. So there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of objectives, and we can't do everything in our video courses. But you know, look it up. Do some basic research. All this stuff is basic. My uh, CompTIA doesn't want us to get down to the electron level. They don't want it to get down to troubleshooting electronics. So take a video course, take a practice test, and you kick butt on it, go and take the test. If you have less experience, add to that litany one more item, a really good in-depth book that provides a substitute for the background that you don't have. Obviously, we recommend the Mike Myers all-in-one series. So if you're taking Net Plus and you go take a practice test or two and you say, man, this is kicking my butt, and I've taken the... Uh, the video course, then you need a little more foundation to meet CompTIA's goals of what you ought to know. And so you get a good book and the world's a happy place. Uh, I, I, so I think that what you want to do is pick up a video course, right? Wait till Udemy has one on sale for 10, 15 bucks, something like that. Uh, 18 bucks is kind of the top end on there for sales stuff. And uh, spend 18 bucks and watch the course and then spend another 10 bucks next time there's a sale on the practice test that we have on Udemy. There's uh, all of our basic courses have uh, a practice test course with 390 question tests in there. And check out, see how you're doing on those things. And they don't necessarily match up to the course. We take practice test questions, <clears throat> excuse me, from our master pool of however many, 1200 for A plus or 900 for net plus, I don't know what it is. Uh, and and that's kind of on purpose. That's to help people know, hey, you know, you can't just memorize everything that's in this course because we can't cover everything in the course. So we go a little broader ranging on the practice test. And if with those two things, you've checked it out and you said, you know what, I'm, I'm doing really well here. I'm getting 90% plus or minus a couple, go take the test. And if not, then it's not as easy for you and go get the book and do it again. In fact, the way the book is laid out with our uh, courses, we do... Uh, chapter four, CPUs and RAM. Video lecture series four, CPUs and RAM. They match roughly with each other. So they're very easy to use uh, as a, a counter pose to study against. Yeah, I know. <laughs> In Mike's line, ask me what time it is. I'll tell you how to make the watch. Sorry. But I, I wanted to make it a little bit more broad ranging for other people who watch this stuff. Crazy people that they are. Hope that helps. Mam SD. Mamsd. Sorry. I, I do my best to pronounce these things. And sometimes people are just smarter than I am when it comes to coming up with a name or having a name. Andre at 202 says, lately I've been seeing an increase in BSODs, blue screens of death, on Windows laptops upgraded from 10 to 11. Anyone else see the same problem or is it just going to uh, I haven't seen it personally. I don't find that surprising. You know, all new products and releases, be they software or hardware, uh, come with early glitches. So it'd be interesting to see who else has got that. <laughs> do, I, do I want to read this out loud before reading it? I'm going to read it silently and see what happens. Okay. A definition of sound. Did I say something about sound? <laughs> it's a fair definition. <clears throat> Human organs of hearing. Only one. Andre talks to Dalton. Vegas Brent is here. A recent renamer, which is cool. What's the code for this week? Titanic. Well, if you use Titanic already this week, well, I don't know if you get to use it multiple times. But you know, just hang on till Monday when it'll be whatever I said it was. Uh, 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 Tyler, I don't try Tyler. It's either Tyler or Titanic. I've messed up my own notes. I don't know what to do anymore. <laughs> but I don't think it remembers old, old codes. But it may remember if you use it. I, I don't know. Give that a stab. Let me know. Send me an email if, if either Tyler or Titanic doesn't work. And I will check with the people who uh, do that stuff and ask them, what's the code this week? 
Catherine Morgan is here talking to Andre. So I'll roll back here. Yeah, she had a problem with going from 10 to 11 and fixed it by going back. Christina's here, my favorite person whose name I can give three different ways during the show. So sorry about that. I won't let that one go. How does one choose their internet name? I don't think I am familiar with the term internet name. Now, if you're talking about a domain name for your network inside your facility, inside your home, inside your small business, and you know you don't have a registered domain with DNS on the internet, uh, there are a couple of reserved domain names that are specifically allowed to exist inside a private network and they don't get passed out. And the usual one is dot local. So if, if that's what you're asking, that's pretty much the answer. Uh, I have a, a router here from my ISP. Eh. I'm not gonna explain it all, it's, it's silly. Nonetheless, they, with their DHCP server, sent out different domain names. It was dot t-mobile something like that and that conflicted with all my other devices that use the normal standard default of dot local and one day after years of doing that I said, I'm, I'm sick of this i want my network to work like everybody else's for demonstration purposes so i went and changed the the domain in there from dot t-mobile or whatever it was to dot local uh, and it takes about 24 to 48 hours to propagate because all the systems have to have their leases expire and call up and get a new DHCP assignment and get that. But if that's not the answer to your question, please clarify for me a little bit. Yeah, I'm with you, Andre. I, I have not yet converted any of my uh, daily driver works for a living computers to Win 11. I have done a number of Win 11 installs for other people and for other purposes, even some stuff at work, but. I'm not ready to switch. Okay, Andre asked the same question here. Passing 209. Right, Andrew Hutz is not here today. By the way, he ends with a Z, not an S. <laughs> ah, never mind. Okay, <laughs> right. Uh, choosing total tester ebook deal is hard. What to choose? All of them. <laughs> right. Wilson's here. Hola, amigo. Saw your post on. Uh, LinkedIn in the last day or two. I saw your name in a post. It may have, may have been one that you posted to that other people responded to. Yeah, that was one you posted one a little while back and, and said hi and thanks to Mike and some other folks. And people are still commenting on that. And because it had my name in there, uh, I get Fred Willard uh, commented on. <laughs> Sorry, my, I super scrolled here. Where did it go? There on Wilson's. Uh, comment that had your name in it. So it kind of gets three references in there that comes to me. Okay, well, I'm glad to know that Fred commented on Wilson's post on LinkedIn. It's okay, Chris, you're allowed to be late. I haven't taken attendance yet. I won't be doing that until uh, end of the show. <clears throat> Tyler didn't apply the discount either. All right, so if something's wrong. Make sure it's all lowercase. That's the way we do all we do them. We also do all uppercase and all and initial caps, but that's it. So I'll look into that. I can't do it right now, but after the show here. I thought, yeah, so Tyler was last week. Yeah, it's, it's Titanic this week. It's absolutely Titanic. Now, if you already bought something this week and use the code Titanic, maybe you can only use it once. That's a question I don't know. And when I send today's winner information to, uh, the person who handles that stuff, this person is also the one who inputs the codes and she can tell me if there's a, uh, I know I said she, it's not Kathy. Some of you have a, a, a tight relationship with Kathy. It is not Kathy. She has stepped away from that. But I'll look at that and see if it can only be used once. But like I said, if that's the case, wait till next week. I know what next week's code is and Mike will announce it on Monday on his show. Man, exciting stuff on Mike's Monday show. I know he can't tell about his big news yet, but uh, I'll, I'll tell you about it as we get toward the end of today's show, which again is going to be a short show today. Uh, okay. 
Happy to help to the best of my ability, Chris. Brand Bags Network Plus 10007 video course is 23 hours. Okay, thank you. Hey, we uh, we are working on something very exciting about our video courses. Um, we have more questions than answers right now, but we are definitely making progress. And I'll give you a hint. The hint is CEU. Okay, if you don't know what that means, you don't care. You will once we, if, if we can get this happening and things are moving very, very fast, you may find this to be extremely beneficial. Hey, Dave Alucard. <laughs> I, I saw Mike try to pronounce your name on the Wednesday show and he just doesn't get your reference. So <laughs> I know Alucard, as you well know. Ping is here. Nice to see you. Ping posted two messages back to back. First one was hello, and second one was message retracted. Okay. It's an older code, but it checks out. I was about to let them through. <laughs> I am well, Ping. Thank you very much. And you, Christina, internet name, the name you use on the internet so as not to give your legal name out to strangers. Well, you don't use a name on the internet other than when you set up access to resources that require a name like an email address uh something like this you know you, you use a moniker uh, a substitute name for your real name but how do you pick a name you think of something you try it and see if anybody else is using it and as far as i know i i, I periodically i don't google myself because i don't use google but uh, I use online search engines and periodically look up uh, my DRush TX. And man, you know, I've had that for years and years and years and years. And nothing ever comes up except my hits until about a week and a half, two weeks ago, somebody adopted my name with their email domain. And what was really weird is I was doing a search in the context of Raspberry Pi, and this person happened to have posted to some Raspberry Pi forum and I'm trying to decide if I should be concerned. Is somebody trying to usurp my identity? Didn't look like it after I get into it, but it's an interesting coincidence, right? Sure, it can be anything you want. Patricia Grace, I read the message before I saw your name and I knew who you were. Ryan Bags, technically, that's an alias, sure. For YouTube, you can change your display name in edit channel. I didn't know that. That's kind of useful. A L U card. That's right. That's right. That's what Mike said. <laughs> the arithmetic logic unit card. <laughs> like that. <laughs> I I'd forgotten what he how he mispronounced it. And Siegfried says at two thirty one, which gets me caught. Oh, you know, I didn't post this for goodness sake. And sitting there in the click it and send it thing and it hasn't, it doesn't want to send. Oh, there it goes, okay. <clears throat> anyway, so Siegfried says at 2.31, I found my own scanner in the garage. I'm gonna get the missing parts and set it up to listen to the trains passing by here at home, okay. That's a fun thing, like listening to scanners. Wilson says, I'm now learning the OSI model on the Network Plus, and so I'm happy to say Mike explains the model in a dramatic way with his different hats, leaving zero possibility of forgetting it. <laughs> I'm enjoying, uh, yeah, I'm going to go with that's enjoying. I'm lodging the Network Plus. Very good, Wilson. Yeah, we had a lot of fun discussing how we were going to present that, how he was going to present that. Uh, we did that, and then we did, I don't remember, we do so many of these things. He and I one time did an OSI presentation on encapsulation and de-encapsulation. He stood by the back door uh, to his backyard and had hats and things like that. And I would hand him things up. So he'd say, now I'm the network layer. Here comes something from the layer two, <laughs> physical data link layer. And I would send a, a card of, you see a little bit of my hands come in. Okay, and now I'm going to pass this up to transport layer. And okay, now I'm the transport layer. And here comes a message from network layer. And I'd be down on the floor passing them up. We just had 
a ball with that one. Love that one. I don't know if that's the one that ever made the show. I know we put it in some uh, course, but I don't recall which one. Uh, Christina, my niece is at the age where she's exploring the internet and asked me, how do you choose an internet name? And I'm like, oh, uh, okay. So yeah, the answer is pick one. Uh, try to make it unique. A lot of people try to make it clever. I don't think D-Rush TX is very clever, is it? But it means that for any state that I move into, I have all kinds of possibilities. <laughs> uh, I posted the, the Titanic information at 233. I have every reason to believe that works. There we go. Name it Superwoman, says Nikash. And thank you, lower layers. <laughs> all right, I'm caught up on that stuff. Let me go see what's going on in notes. I don't have much in notes today. Uh, we are going to do a contest today. And I got a couple other brief things to talk about in news and tricks and techniques and stuff like that. What did I just do? <laughs> I changed batteries in my mouse just before the show started. Oh, well, that explains a lot. Sorry, stand by. One moment, please. Today is the 15th. That makes it this file. There we go. I closed this one and opened another one before the show started. So sorry. <clears throat> okay. Did all that nonsense and that nonsense. And... Titanic. It says Titanic. Those are accurate notes. Where have we been? Okay. So let's do a little catch up here. Where we've been, where we're going what we're doing today. So last week we installed an internet radio client on Raspberry Pi, it was called Pi Radio. And I'm gonna carry that out a little bit further uh, at some time in the near future uh, where we're gonna use Wireshark and watch the stream process on that. We should also do that with here uh, and see the difference. We're gonna look at some streaming protocols because that's kind of the tie-in to the CompTIA stuff that we do. And I already explained it today what I'm doing. I'm just doing a Q&A show. Uh, and no project because it's a short day and it's a holiday and viewership isn't real high today. And I don't want to, I want to keep my powder dry. How's that? Uh, news tricks, traps, and techniques. There wasn't anything I found that was so interesting that I felt the need to share it with you. I do have something or, or two to share with you, but it didn't make it news, tricks, and techniques. Man, I'm in Mike's situation. There are so there is so much that I want to tell you, and I can't. And it's not just Mike's stuff. There's other stuff going on in the world that I have to hold. But things will come together very quickly. I've got meetings with management next week, and we'll see where that leads. And it's just exciting potential stuff no old unanswered questions and don't put that stuff up anymore okay man i had something i really wanted to talk about yeah all right must not be that critical uh how about some silly pointless stuff to share with you if you're an a plus technician this is one of the rare hardware tools that will come in really handy Okay, it's a multimeter. We used to call them volt ohm meters, but they measure more than volts and ohms and things like that. This particular one, it's not my top of the line one, but this is a really good one. This was a gift from my wife and son many, many, many years ago. I've had this forever. It's, it's, it's a craftsman, not where I would normally go to, but man, I have had this and, and I love it. I use it. And so I pulled it out today. I'm, well, I'm going to guess I've had this thing for 15 years, something like that. Still works like a champ. Uh, and I went to test something today, and the numbers just weren't right. Well, I don't know if you know this, but your multimeter, if you've got one, has a battery or batteries in it, and they do need to be changed. They last a long time. Uh, so these came with an initial set of batteries. I think I changed them once six or seven or eight years ago. And so I knew as soon as I saw that wonky reading, that was the case, open things up. It was a little one screw in there and you take this rubber cover off on mine 
and pop it out. The batteries weren't corroded or anything like that. But I pulled them out. I set them aside. I put a couple of fresh batteries in there and closed everything up. And then I tested the voltage on the, the two little batteries in there. There's supposed to be 1.5 volts. When you buy a, a regular alkaline 1.5 volt battery, it probably is about 1.65 volts. That makes a big difference. A lot of life out of these things. Uh, these batteries were running at 1.02 volts. And that half volt is a huge differential. So every now and again, check and change the batteries in your multimeter. I changed batteries on three different things today. Can't even remember what they all were now. Yeah, well. Oh, yeah. I know the other thing I wanted to talk about. Should I go get it? No. I'm just going to describe it. Do I have anything here that I can? Yeah, this will do. So I had a gig this past weekend. Yeah, we'll do some pretending with this one. It was a very complicated gig. Lots of complicated audio, very complicated video, and I don't DJ gigs. My business is a rental, it's an equipment rental business. Hey, I'm a DJ. I want to uh, have a little more oomph for my shindig this weekend. Yeah, here, I got big amps and I got lots of dance lights and, 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 and. And we have pipe and drape. Hey, we're, I'm not a DJ, but I'm, our church is throwing a party. We're having a wedding reception, whatever. People come to us and, and rent that stuff out. But this particular gig this weekend uh, is an organization that's near and dear to my heart. And so I work that one. I DJ that one. And there's one or two other events over the course of the year that I'm willing to DJ, but mostly not. Well, this one, they added something new this year. They, it was an, a, a big porch, a, a big commercial facility covered porch that's got monitors all over the porch, spread very, very far apart, hundreds of feet. And at some point in their far distant past, they had a feed that they could run from the inside, hook it up to anything with HDMI output, and it would appear on all those screens. But that feed has failed and they've never gotten it fixed or repaired. And I, this is just a, a facility. It has nothing to do with the organization that I was working for. The organization rents out that facility. And so they said, we got to have, we're going to show a video. And we needed to be up on all their monitors at the same time. So I had to do a little begging and, and pleading to say, look, I'm going to be installing my own cabling systems and whatever here. And they said, fine. <laughs> Which, you know, I think somebody should have been staring over my shoulder. That probably explains why their primary feed didn't do. All right. I'm not going to get into the whole detail of all the setup, but I do want to tell you about one particular piece. I had to buy some 100 foot HDMI cables. Now, if you've studied A, you know that you have to know about HDMI cables. And you probably know that you have to know distance, maximum cable lengths for all kinds of different things like USB and Cat3 cables and Cat4s and 5s and 6s and all that good stuff. But one of the things that they never ask you to memorize is the maximum length on an HDMI cable. We're going to pretend that this is an HDMI cable. It's not. Uh, and there's a reason for that. There is no published maximum distance spec. However, there is a practical distance, right? If you try to pump a signal into a 100-foot HDMI cable, and if it came out reliably at the other end, it's a miracle. The cable's incredible. They use gold-plated conductors inside. I don't know. But so what I did just to make sure that I got the right equipment that I needed off the bat is an HDMI cable with what they call an inline booster in it. Now, this was a good thing for me to pick up uh, because there is a little circuit that's kind of wrapped up like this. It's a little longer. It's about nine inches long or so. Uh, and it's... A, not at the end of one of the cables, but it's in the middle of one. So, okay, right here. Now, a booster is an amplifier. Now, an amplifier doesn't work unless it gets voltage, and there's not enough voltage that comes on the HDMI signal to power this thing and, and make it do its job. So what they have is this little USB connector. You plug it in any old USB port, and at the end of a little short wire is 
a female HDMI connector and a male HDMI connector. And all they do is they take a pair of those wires and they put power on them. And they're wires that are available, not used in a normal HDMI connector and cable system. So those two wires go down until they hit that inline booster. And now it's got power to do its job. It picks up the video and audio signals from the other appropriate wires. It amplifies them and cleans them up and then sends them down the other 50 feet. So it doesn't get so weak in the first 50 feet that it can't be fixed and cleanly reamplified. That is a very, very cool thing. So if you need long run, there's other ways to achieve long runs. And I use those methods as well. I used a, a system that's got uh, HDMI into this box and then unshielded twisted pair cable. It's good for 200 feet uh, to another box. And then it unseparates it out and puts it back into another HDMI cable. Used one of those to boot. But I uh, just had to get that HDMI cable because I, I, I needed it for comfort's sake. How are we doing here? It's quarter till. All right, check for questions and then we'll do a contest. And then we'll do questions until they dry up and get the heck out of here. Now, as you may know, Mike made an announcement on Monday, uh, at the beginning of this week, that at, for the time being, and we're hoping that this is a very short time being, the voucher program is, let's call it suspended. Uh, we got blindsided by it. I think the, the CompTIA, our CompTIA contact probably got blind, blindsided as well. And so Mike immediately got on the horn and said, we got to talk. And so they have arranged a discussion for next week. And we'll have to, Mike used the term, uh, I'll see if I can bring them around to right think. So, okay, we'll see how that goes. So don't abandon our shows if you're only here for vouchers. Keep sticking around. Vouchers may be back. And if they are, hopefully it'll be in very short order. We still will do on each of our shows uh, total test or practice test giveaways. And there's a lot more variety in those because our practice tests cover all the, the big popular CompTIA practice tests, but they also cover non-CompTIA exams like CEH and others. I think there's some, some Amazon stuff in there. All right, so let me head back over to testy or to questions in the feed is not too many, but if you'd get caught up, that works out very well. Uh, my bags, take you a little bit. Okay, that's where I left off. So Chris Kent at 2.37 deleted his message. Andre, always keep your powder dry. Thank you, Andre, exactly right. Wet powder, no boom. Use through, multimeter. Multimeter should be pronounced multimeter. Hey, you know, I go into wacky sidetracks. I've got a thing that's been bugging me for years. Nobody's going to change it. Nobody's going to fix this. But this is just one of those things where when I hear this term, I immediately go insane and go out back and start killing squirrels by strangling them with wet spaghetti strings. Uh, the past tense of teach is taught in English. Therefore, why isn't the past tense of preach? Prot. Does that bother you like it bothers me? Probably not. That just somebody says preached, and it's a fine word. It's it's the right word, but it should be prot in my mind. And there's a couple other words there for catch, caught, right? We don't say catched. Now, Chris Kent, David Rush, what is the best way to study with total seminars videos and the CompTIA 10th edition together? I ask because I want to get the most out of both. Okay. So here's the problem, and then here's some possible solutions, because there's no singular right answer to that. The book is written, chapter four, CPUs and RAM. I'm, I'm, that's pretty close. I may be wrong, but I'm, I'm going to be pretty close to that on that one. And the way we write the chapter on CPUs and RAM in the book is to cover everything that you need to know for 1001 or 1101, since we're deep into writing the new book and for 002, 1002, 1102. But the courses aren't done that way. The courses are done with all the 1001 stuff in one course and all the 1002 stuff, core two, in the other course. 
So here are some approaches. We don't have a recommended approach. Here are approaches that people have reported to us that have worked for them. And some have reported this one doesn't work for me, so I do this. Now, what you need to carry into this game is, man, I had this really good, important thought that I thought was a nice thing to say first. And this last. Okay. The purpose of the two of them. As I mentioned earlier, if you walk in with the CompTIA recommended experience, the video course should be enough. But if you have less than that, then you want the book. So recognize then that the point of the book is to provide a substitute for a year's worth of hands-on experience. And that's true for A+, that's true for Net+, that's true for Security+. Plus. I've never worked in security. Well, CompTIA says you should have a year's worth of employment or job doing security administration. I, I, I don't. I can't do that. I, I, I can't intern and whatever my rationale is and, and the reasons, legitimate reasons for not being able to have that experience before I go take the test. Cool. That's why we write the book. So you can have that experience. So you could learn everything that you need to know from just the book. You never need the video. So why are they different? Well, because the book has everything in it, including breadth and depth of stuff that CompTIA doesn't put a lot of emphasis on on the exams but since they put some emphasis on it we write about it and, and because of contractual obligations with organizations that uh, we provide books to we have to by that contract address every single bullet on the objectives every sub bullet every sub sub bullet every single thing in there we have to write about sometimes it's very very little sometimes it's just a tech tip Sometimes it's pages or paragraph of uh, pages or a half a chapter, it depends on. But we create the videos to say, you got the background. Maybe you got the background from the book. Maybe you got the background because you've been in IT for three years. Here's the stuff that we know that CompTIA has been focusing on at the time we shot this thing. And some stuff that uh, maybe they're not focusing on, but th there's some stuff in there that you need a little more background or a little refresher because most jobs probably don't do this, right? So it, it's not a cram prep, but it's very close to, this is really gonna help you on the exam with, a lot, with not a lot of extraneous material. Okay, that all laid out, here is now the answer to your question. Your choice, read a chapter, read the whole chapter, study it, learn from it, and then, Watch the associated chapter series, one of the section on Udemy, and do that for all of the sections. There's 36 of them, plus or minus, on uh, A. I don't remember how many is on Net. Uh, or do it the other way around. Doesn't matter. Watch the video and say, ah, this is the stuff that uh, CompTIA is focusing on. This is the stuff that Mike thinks I need to really know about to, to do well on the exam given my experience or lack thereof, and then go back and hit the book. You'll, oh yeah, okay, I saw him talk about this. Here's the, the additional information and the depth and breadth on that. So that's what we're recommending. And you can you know kind of mix and match even every day. I did some of this chapter today. I'll do some of it uh, from the book and that in the video during the day. And, and so that doesn't work out as cleanly because we don't order everything exactly within the chapters for a presentation order because the, the learning media and what they call the pedagogy is a little different in the way we do the videos and the way we do books. But basically do a section of the videos, do a section of the book, one before the other, the other before the one, doesn't matter. No voucher contest today, Brian Bags. I'm so sorry for the moment. That program is, I'm calling it suspended. Other people are using harsher terms. We'll see when 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 the final adjudication comes and the last meeting comes. We'll let you know. I'm here with or without the voucher. Thank you, Chris Kent. Wilson, Chris Kent, I'm with you, man. Very nice. My pleasure. All right. So that's a good time to wind that stuff up. Let's do a contest. 
And what do I need to get done in advance? This little thing. Okay, I can get that spewed up on here. No, not that, you big silly person. Well, that's just weird. Okay. I am fixed. All right, so we're going to do a contest. This is going to be a contest for 90 day access to any of the total tester practice tests that we have in our inventory. If you win today, I need to hear from you in the next two or three hours. Excuse me, it's Friday night, and I got to get that sent into the office. So I'm not going to send it in over the weekend, and I've already got three winners to submit from this week. One person from the previous week didn't submit until a week late. If you don't submit that today, it's not going to go until the end of next week. To die? When did it all become Australian? <laughs> I like the Aussies. Some of you here are Aussies. Okay, this is going to be a fill in the blank question. It's from the uh, 220 1101, the new A plus objectives. So you may not know this. That's right, I'll make them simpler uh, and I make them harder. I kind of mix and match, but I was looking through the objectives today and this is a, a a thing that I'm running into more and more as I research and do things. Today's topic is going to become part of your everyday lexicon, your vernacular. And so I thought this one was kind of an important real world thing as well as an exam. So let's just find the slide with the question on it. First one that I deem as the winner is going to be the winner, right or wrong. And the good news is if you won anything before, you can win again, you can win today, you know, unless you want a whole bunch and you want so many where you've broken the bank, we say, no, I'm sorry, I'll bypass you. So if I see you've got a right answer, but one or two away, uh, somebody's got a right answer and you won a couple of times before and this name that uh, is also right or close answer, uh, right answer for this one, uh, has never won anything, I'm gonna lean toward that one, you understand. We're trying to spread this around, and especially since we can only do one giveaway per show right now. Does that make sense? I hope it does. All right, so this is going to be a question that has two answers to it. You must provide them both on the same line. You can provide just the answers are letters. Okay, it's not A, B, C, D, but they have letters in them. And all you got to do is do these letters for the first blank and a space or a comma or whatever. I know I'm doing a lot of setup on this, but I had a tough time writing this question and trying to make it work. So I, I want to make this as fair for you as I possibly can. So let's say that the answers were going to be ZZ and YY. Well, that's it. So ZZ space YY or whatever it's going to be. Get it? Okay, let's do a share on that. There is a truck out front of my house doing the beeping thing with the backup. And I'm concerned. He frightens me. Okay, this is, here comes the question. You're going to post your answer in the YouTube chat feed. I'm going to run this for about a minute or so. Then I'm going to uh, research for who has the right answers and pick a winner. Ready to share, ready to share. Here it goes. That was weird. Okay. Well. <clears throat> Oh, all right, you're reading the question before and that's okay, go ahead. I'm gonna read it and, and cover it in just a moment, but something is odd. Okay, I'll just do this one. Uh, so the Wi-Fi industry is changing the names of Wi-Fi standards. It improves marketing. So instead of saying 802.11a, which confuses people, they're giving it a much friendlier name. In fact, they're giving it uh, then the name something like Wi-Fi 1, 802.11a might be Wi-Fi 1. So it helps consumers recognize the newest standard, right? So if there's a Wi-Fi 11 and I just saw a Wi-Fi 12 advertised, oh, I don't want the 12, that's newer and bigger and better. Well, let's talk about two of them in particular then. Wi-Fi 5 and Wi-Fi 6 are the new labels for which two 802.11 letters standards. So give me an answer. You can do the whole thing. You can say 802.11. letter, 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 however many letters you think there are. And so for Wi-Fi 5 and for Wi-Fi 6. So I'm going to take them in order, right? So if you're giving me two letters, 
and you don't say it's five and six, I'm going to assume the ones that you put up there, uh, the first one is for Wi-Fi 5, and the second one is for Wi-Fi 6. You may submit one answer. All right, that's running. It's doing its thing. Let me go look and see what's happening here. Interesting. Okay, a lot of interesting guesses. I see a correct answer. Keep going. You may have, you, your yours may not be up there. The correct answer that I see may be a person who's won many times. So if you've got a submission, don't give up on it yet. Throw it up there. Let's see who's got anything. By the way, don't assume that somebody you know on here who's really smart uh, has the right answer. And so, because there's a lot of wrong answers up here, kids. While you're doing that and doing your research and posting things, I'm going to look up and see if who I think I see is, has won or won too many times. Hold that thought. We're just going to let things keep running, and I'm going to keep yammering so we don't have dead air time. Voucher winners, there we go. Today is the 11th. Today is the 15th, 415. Okay, we'll put that there, and now we do a search here. Oh, wow. Okay, so this person has won in the past. So... If you haven't put a, a guess up there yet, you have a chance to steal. <laughs> that was a really, really interesting thing, too, the way this person won. So you're not out of the running. Winner, previous winner, don't panic yet. Uh, I am reasonably certain you've won more than... <laughs> I know you've won. Oh, there is a name that I've never seen before, but let me check on another one just to make sure. So I got three people with right answers, maybe more. Uh, but I've already potentially thrown one out of the running. So if you've got a guess and you haven't put it up yet, by all means do. Ah, okay. That one is also. A previous winner back in February. Has he won or she won more than once? No. Has this person won more than once? No. Okay, so I got two one-time winners, but here's one last one. Okay, I'm gonna we're gonna close off submissions now. I'm going to check this one last one. I think we have a winner who, whose name I have never seen before. Yes. Okay. We have a winner. Let me put the, oh, stop it. Hang on. This is the hard part about working without Andrew. 15. Change this. Save it. Okay. So let me put the right answer up and then I'm going to explain the winner and explain what happened to the potential winners. The answer Wi Fi 5 is 802.11 AC. That's the one that you've probably been using for the last couple of years. Wi Fi 6 is the new 802.11 AX. Now, technically, all of the other standards, A, B, G, and N, are one through four. However, if you look at the objectives, for 220-1101, they mention all of the 802s from A, B, G, N, A, C, A, X, but they only mention two of the new marketing terms, Wi-Fi 5 and Wi-Fi 6, and that was why I did that today. So the winner that I've selected 
who's never won before, uh, to my ability to recognize, is Claruth. Claruth. C. Laruth. I'm sorry, I'm totally mispronouncing that. But uh, the answer was AC and AX in that order. I saw uh, Chris Kent, you had it right, and you were uh, – sorry, you weren't first. Uh, who was first? Alan Owens was first. Alan Owens won very recently uh, because he was correct. I picked the wrong person. Uh, I gave it to Ping, and we all realized – you guys all realized and pointed out to me that uh, Ping was not the appropriate choice and that Alan Owens was, and Ping passed very, very kindly. And so Alan became the correct winner, as he should have been. And Chris Kent, a winner back in February. And if nobody else had had it, I would have given it to you. Chris, please don't give up. Keep trying. Oh, you goodness, silly thing. Stop it. Clarouth, hang on. There we go. All right, Clarouth. Apologies for the horrible mispronunciation that I'm surely doing. I just posted on the chat feed at 05, five minutes past the hour, what to do to claim your winnings. And I'm going to put it up here on the screen. Uh, copy and paste that so you'll get it exactly right the first time, please. And please send that to me at your earliest convenience today, the next hour or two. If you're not sure which practice tests we have, as soon as you're done with the show, go to totalsem.com and go to our merchant area and look, for all, look at all of our practice tests and pick one from that list. By the way, if you pick uh, A+, plus, you will get practice tests for both 1001 and 1002. I can't, don't tell me by name though. You got to say, I want practice tests for exam, N10, 001, N10, 007, 008, whatever, because there are some practice tests that have the same name, but different generations. And A plus is the only one where we're giving both right now. All right, so you're gonna send an email to Dave R at totalsum.com and you're gonna identify in that email with your YouTube name, Claruth, and all the rest of the stuff has to be in the body of the email. I can't get stuff from your header. Your YouTube name, Claruth, your real given name, your first name and your surname, the email address that you want me to send back your access code information to, and which practice test you want by exam number. And congratulations, Claruth, on winning this week's practice test. Let me check any last questions, and then we'll wind things up here. Apologies for the short show. Apologies for no program. That was all intentional. Uh, and, and I'll tell you what's going on next week with other stuff. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Alan Owens posted and retracted two messages. All right. All right, let me check the last of my notes here. We'll wind things up. Thank you all for coming, as ever and always. No, I got to go way down here. So I'm keeping in my notes everything we need to do to do vouchers again. So I'm not giving up. Know what I'm saying? All right, time permitting. Upcoming episodes, next couple of episodes. Next week, I'm going to do a presentation on Whiptail. Uh, Whiptail is a tool that's used in bash scripting. Let me demo for you. I want you to see this because I learned about this recently and I always thought it was something, some kind of new program that I'd have to learn or some kind of new application. And it's not, this is very exciting. So give me just a second while I whip up session here, 192.168.1.112. Log in as pi, password raspberry, R-A-S-P-B-E-R-R-Y. All right, and now we're gonna share this. I'm not tied to a clock here. I can run a little bit over. I could run the whole two hours if I felt like it. What are you doing? Share screen, this one. All right, so I've got an SSH. I really do, there we go. I got an SSH session established with uh, an almost bare Raspberry Pi. So fresh install, it's got one or two apps installed on it, and that's it. Now I'm gonna run an app here that's already installed in the Raspberry Pi OS. Excuse me, hiccups. Hmm. All right. Uh, sudo raspy raspi dash config. Enter. All right. You see all this 
textual menu stuff, this is Whiptail. It's a program that's built into most versions of Linux, Linux, and you can just call to it and use it. You kind of configure it as you program in bash scripting. So it's really cool. It's really powerful. And it's not difficult. I'm not going to do so much next week that you're going to be an expert at this. I'm going to demo stuff. I'm going to intro stuff and give you some direction to go learn on your own. But it's so much cooler than having you know a text line like we're looking at here that says, would you like to continue? Yes, no, with a question mark sitting beside it. How about something where I can arrow two things and enter on them and backspace and do all that good stuff? So that's the nature of the beast. Uh, that menu subsystem is called Whiptail. So that's what I'm going to do next week. It's ready to go now, so I don't have to do much prep for the upcoming week. After that, Andrew and I are doing our Nessus presentation for a week or two. And then I don't know what's coming up after that. Oh, we got IoT coming up. And we've got uh, subnetting coming up. Mike's show on Monday. This is something that has been talking about for a week or two. Uh, we put it together on Friday. Mike is bringing in his special guest and longtime friend, Jessica Dickerson. Jessica is a force in the IT security contracting industry and uh, self-employment and actual rent employment. She's going to be talking about IT jobs, what you need, where to find them, where to look, and IT security jobs. So hacking and pen testing and evaluating and blue teaming and red teaming and all that stuff. So if you have any interest in, in pursuing employment in general IT or in IT security, catch Mike's show on Monday. Jessica will be live and in studio brushing elbows with him, just like you've seen some other guests do in the past. The last time we had Jessica on was back in 2020, a million years ago, and it was a Zoom session. In fact, that was one of the first guests that we ever did, and so we were kind of feeling our way through things on how to do a guest with Zoom. We had a pretty good idea, and it worked out very well, but uh, there were questions. All right, well, let's close this thing up. Let's, any last questions? Just to take one final quick peek. Yeah, a little, oh, wow, explosion. Okay, we can do that. Reading messages. Thanks, guys. I wish I got the voucher for the exam, though. I wish I could get one for you. And as I said, don't give up hope. Keep coming back. Come back to Mike's show. Come back to my show. If it, if it turns out it's going to be permanent, we'll tell you. But for the moment, we have hopes that it's just in a state of suspension. Predictive text is nuts, my friend. <laughs> yeah, very good. Andrew, Andre, no more vouchers for the time being. Yeah. Is everybody, we don't know. Clearly, we're working on the answer to that. Uh, we got word that the, the program was suspended. Uh, we heard Monday morning, right? So I'm, I'm going crazy on Monday morning pulling out announcements from all kinds of various media that we have. And, and Mike and I are talking about how we were going to present it. And Mike sent me a message somewhere doing it. He said, I'm not satisfied with this stoppage. Get me the phone number and get me Rex Kramer. And so he got on the phone with Rex Kramer and they, they arranged to have a, a more fulfilling meeting next week. This week, obviously, Mike is very, 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 very small. Two hours. Yeah, normally it's a two hour show, Chris Kent. And, you know, I'll go as long as there's questions. But I think everything is drying up here. We've covered the contest. We don't have a, a program that I want to do today. So, this is a, excellent. Thanks for streaming. How many vouchers did Total Sim get or give away? That's a good question. I will research that answer and tell you that Monday, uh, Friday. I'll tell Mike that. You know what? That's that's really useful information for Mike for his meeting. So I'll share that with Mike. And then if he chooses to share it with you, cool. And if he doesn't, I'm not going to ask him if I can. And then he can't say I can't, right? <laughs> How much trouble can I get myself into? Hey, well, let's wind this thing up then. It is Friday. For some of you, it's a three-day weekend. For some of you, like Andre, it's very late at night. Oh, let's post one more thing. Let's have some fun. Uh, let's post two more things. I'm going to put a refresher up here on what the uh, 
the Discord invite is. Some of you are going to hang out on Discord after the show. I will not be on Discord after the show today. I have other things that are pressing, but the Discord, in, Discord invite has now been posted at 14 minutes past the current hour. Here's the specials. The code is Titanic. I got a back channel message while I was doing that. It's good through Sunday night. If I don't have confirmation about its reusability. But again, you need just hang on until Monday. There will be a new code on Monday and uh, you can get more stuff then. It'll be the same stuff. Right. Have I said, let's wind this thing up enough times that I can actually start winding things up? Because that's my plan. Hey, at any rate then. So as ever and always, my eternal gratitude to Mike Myers, Andrew Hutz when he's here, all the folks at uh, Total Seminars who devote time and effort and resources uh, to make this kind of show possible and same for Mike's shows. Uh, but my most heartfelt thanks, of course, always goes to everyone who comes here to participate. Without you, there is no show and I would have to be doing real work. I am Dave Rush. I'm the senior instructor at Total Seminars. I am resident pie specialist. I'm wishing you a great weekend. Please take care of each other, take serious steps to stay healthy, call or visit your parents, and never forget, technology is great, but the greatest resource we have are you and I. So with that, good night. I'll see you on the AMAs next week. And until then, I am out of here.